Hola, hola. My name is Ramon, cosmetic chemist, esthetician, lover of Korean sunscreens, and now creator of a Korean sunscreen. Today, we are finally doing the review video of my brand new collaboration with Beauty of Joseon, the sunscreen I developed for them, the matte sunstick. And yes, you did hear that correctly, matte sunstick. I actually have it on half of my face right now, and you can pretty easily tell which half it is because it's the half that obviously has no shine on it. Today's video is gonna be a full review of the ingredients, the filters, the breakdown of what the sunstick is, what some of the limitations of the sunstick are, as well as a little bit of the story of how I developed it with Beauty of Joseon. As always, I'll have timestamps down below so you can go to whatever part of the video you would like to watch. But since this is a chemical sunscreen, we're gonna be using my 6F testing rubric where we'll talk about the feel, finish, filters, formulation, foundation wear, and fragrance of the sunscreen. And then the last part of the video is gonna be some of the story behind how I developed it with the team. So first F is the feel. So this is obviously a sunstick, which means it has to have materials that let it have that rigid structure that a stick has. But that being said, a lot of the things behind this are emollients that let this have a really nice slip on the skin, as well as giving a nice powdery finish on the skin, as well as the powders that help to add the mattifying effect in this. So when it slides on the skin, it's very smooth. And the afterfill once it sets down is very powdery. It's very soft on the skin. That's been the biggest feedback I've gotten is that people, after they apply it, they rub their skin, they're like, my skin feels so soft. So that's due to the waxes, the emollients as well as the powders that are in this. The finish of it, obviously it's in the name. It is a matte sunstick. And you can see on my skin right now, this side, it's nice, natural, satiny finish, not flat matte. And that A was important to me, but also B kind of talks about the limitations of what this is, but I'll get to that at the end of the formulation part of the video. But you still got some glow, but it's a nice soft matte satin matte finish. So that just adds a reference to what finish you're gonna get with this. And again, this was just an application over my sunscreen for today. The more you reapply it throughout the day, you're gonna get a little bit more of a glow. So what I recommend if you're gonna use this for reapplication is I always blot, but I always blot anyways, cause I'm just like oily. So before you reapply with the matte sunstick, go and blot some of the excess shine and then you can go on top with the sunstick and you're all good. The filters for this, so this is a fully chemical sunscreen and this is developed by Cosmax. So it's not a Colmar formula. The filters in this are Evenol A+, Tinosorb S, Evenol T150 and Polysilicone 15. And when I was developing this, I was very adamant. I said no mineral filters, so no zinc, no titanium, as well as no Tinosorb M, because I needed to ensure this would be as brown and black skin friendly as humanly possible. So it's fully chemical sunscreen, newer innovative filters that we always love to see in Korean sunscreens. That just gives it that SPF 50 plus PA4 plus rating. For the formulation details, the biggest things for me in that regard were obviously no fragrance, essential oil, or alcohol. Ingredients I love, but you guys don't. And I wanted to make this as like accessibly like usable as possible. So I wanted as many people to use this, specifically sensitive skin types, those who have very acne prone skin. This also has zero niacinamide in it, which is another thing. And the developers were like, you don't want niacinamide. And Beauty Joseon was like, are you sure no niacinamide? And the thing is a lot of people, because of the fact that niacinamide isn't everything, people have sensitivity issues to that. And my thought process was this is for the person that that A, anyone can use this. So omitting that ingredient makes it so that more people are able to use this sunscreen. But also my idea with developing this was that realistically someone is going to have other steps in the skincare routine. I designed this to be used with a very minimal skincare routine. So we know like my little three minute morning routine, I just do like a hydrator and then my sunscreen. So the idea is you will have that niacinamide in the other product, whether that is your serum, your toner, your moisturizer. This is just really giving you that sun protection. So no niacinamide. With the launch of this product though, which the video will be live on the day, January 16th, it is launching with a glow, plus Sunset, which I chose to do with the brand. And so that features the matte sunstick as well as my favorite serum from the brand. This is their Glow Deep Serum. This has alpha arbutin and niacinamide in it. And the idea with that set is if you have hyperpigmentation, this is the duo for you. After your morning rinse or cleanse, go in with the serum to hydrate, protect, and have some of the pigment fading benefits. Top up with your sunscreen, you're good for the day. As I mentioned earlier, the big thing behind this with the fill and the finish are the ingredients that give the sunstick its stick structure and stick texture. So you have waxes and emollients in there that allow this to have a good slip. And while they are emollients and waxes, they are not necessarily going to clog pore. So if you have acne prone skin, still a great product for you to use. They just allow this to slip very nicely on the skin, leave that nice powdery soft finish as well as a non-greasy finish. And with that non-greasiness, that's part of the emollients used. So there's emollients like Coco Caprolate Caprate, which is one I formulate with on the daily basis. And then you have things like silica, which silica itself is a mattifying powder. You also have boron nitride, which is basically it's a functional filler ingredient. It gives slip, but also helps mattify some more. 
more. So I tried to do as much as possible with the team at Cosmax to make this so that it felt nice on the skin, it looked nice on the skin, and also it prepped the skin well for makeup. This is a great primer. Other like skincare ingredients. So you have turmeric in this. Turmeric is a great antioxidant. It also has some nice soothing benefits. Really the highlight in this outside of the mattifying agents is the fact that it has really nice soothing ingredients in it. So you have the mugwort, you have the camellia, you have centella up in here and the turmeric. Turmeric, there's a little bit, a little bit of studies evidence showing that it can help potentially with the fading of the appearance of pigmentation. I'm not saying it's going to be the answer to pigmentation, but if your routine is really focused around that, turmeric is a nice ingredient to see. And then you have ingredients like green tea, panthenol, glycerin, and hyaluronic acid. There's also neem and aloe. And then you have a couple oils in here. You do have jojoba oil as well as green tea seed oil. They are very lightweight oils and it's a very small percentage of them. But again, with a stick formulation, the big issue was ingredients have to be oil soluble or they are solubilized so that they are water-based but still can go in this primarily oil-based formulation. Certain ingredients, if you want certain benefits from them, they have to be above a certain percentage and therefore they have to be oil-based because this is an oil-based formulation. If you could see benefits from them in a lower concentration, then that's when we had them solubilized in low amounts within this oil-based formulation. And as I mentioned earlier, this is non-comedogenic. It's not going to clog pores. There are lightweight oils and the finish and the feel of this are not oily and not greasy as you can see on screen. So do rest assured. As I did mention earlier, this is a fantastic primer for makeup. And I have a lot of friends really surprised that this primes their skin very well for makeup because of the functional fillers and emollients in this, that nice powdery soft finish on the skin just really blurs some of the texture and some of the pores, gives you a nice powdery matte finish for your foundation to go on top of and helps to prevent your foundation from getting oily throughout the day. My friend Ola today messaged me. He was like, girl, this under some concealer and powder is golden and it kept my makeup from getting more oily than normal. So I'm very surprised about the response about this being a fantastic makeup primer. I've used it as a primer and I love it, but it's just very surprising to see everyone's response to this has been very positive so far. And then the last F is fragrance. And as I mentioned earlier, fragrance free, no essential oils. There's not even like a botanical scent in this as a result of any of the botanical extracts. So this is fragrance free, essential oil free, great if you have sensitive skin and sensitivity in those areas. And speaking of sensitivity, if you have eye sensitivity, I mean, I never really have an issue with that, but I have a lot of friends who've tried this out. And I mean, we go heavy around the eyelid area and none of them have complained about sensitivity and irritation in the eye area. One thing that the developer behind this told me was that because this is a stick texture, the way it deposits product on the skin allows it to stay so it doesn't travel and therefore it does risk more irritation around the eye area. So that's really good to know about this as well. And then a little FAQ that I've gotten a lot in the last few days on my social media posts about the sun stick. First things first, this as of right now has not been tested for water and sweat resistance. We omitted that just due to timing and the delays behind some of the prospects of formulating the sun stick. So as of right now, it does not have that designation. Second thing is the potential for bacterial growth on this. So this is a sun stick, meaning it is a solid texture, similar to lip balms and lipsticks, meaning it is large largely or entirely anhydrous, meaning free of water. This does have some water in it just to help solubilize some of the extracts, but there's no free water available in this. Water is what's necessary for microbial growth. If there's no water available for those microbes to grow, it's all good. So really bacteria might exist on this, but they won't be able to like live and multiply. If that's a concern for you, a quick little wipe with a tissue or even like a little bit of alcohol, it's not gonna mess up the formula, will be perfectly fine. What I do is I always just like do a little swipe on the back of my arm and then I go in on my face. That helps to warm it up and get Get any residue off the surface and I'm all good. And then one of the other big things was, does it apply over makeup? Here's the deal. I have never gotten a sun stick to apply over my makeup, any kind of sun stick, any kind of texture. So when I developed this, that was not a priority and not something that I was trying to do. That being said, I've seen a few creators just go in with this right over their foundation, their blush, their bronzer and everything, and it doesn't remove much product or any at all. So I'm not going to say that it does, but I am saying that I have seen it do well over makeup. So do with that what you will. I'll include videos and links for different creators reviews down below if I can find them. For Deep Skin, Tamino Abbey had the first review up. Thank you, girl. I really appreciate it. I'll have her link down below in the description box as well. So now let's talk about some of the limitations of what this formula really is. I want to be as transparent as possible and really lay out what you can realistically expect out of this. First things first is this is a stick sunscreen. As I mentioned, there's waxes, there's emollients, there's oils in this, and there has to be for it to be a stick texture. There's also oil-soluble UV filters in this. That's just like UV filters are not water 
water soluble. That's just the reality behind it. So that limits realistically how matte, matte, matte the product is going to be and how matte we could really make it because you're not going to get a flat powder matte finish. And as you can see, this is nicely glowy, but it's not greasy. It's not shiny. It's not heavy on the skin, but it's not flat matte. Realistically though, if you want that finish, just use this and powder on top. And as you reapply throughout the day and you find it might be a little bit too shiny, just blot before you reapply with this and you're all good. But that's one thing I did want to communicate is that there's really a limitation to how matte this product could have been because of the fact that that's the texture and the formulation required for this product. Another fact behind it, and this goes to the white cast situation is when it comes to mattifying powders and functional fillers, like I mentioned, the silica and the boron nitride, those are white powders. And so the more you increase that concentration, the more the likelihood is of this potentially having a cast on deeper skin tones. I've seen this look absolutely flawless and clear on about up to a Fenty 470 skin tone, no issues, no cast. That is something I want to communicate. I'm not a miracle worker. Me and the team at Cosmax, we went back and forth really trying to balance that out, but we needed to have it so that it was matte enough that we could say it was matte, but I could not have it leave a cast on deeper skin tones. So up to a Fenty 470, I can guarantee. Beyond that, I still have not seen a review and application yet. Also, I do want to say when I developed this, the idea behind it was to use in a minimal routine. I've heard and I've experienced that with a very, very extensive routine underneath this, there might be a chance of some pilling. And again, my idea with developing this was you use this over a minimal serum moisturizer situation, not a lot of steps underneath it. So if you want to mitigate any pilling with this, minimal routine underneath this is all you need. And the last big thing about this is just the fact that raw materials are getting expensive and we could have spent a lot more time going back and forth, really finessing the formula to do X, Y, and Z, but we wanted this to be below a certain price point as well. And again, with raw material being so expensive, packaging getting really expensive now, shipping getting so expensive, really once we got the formula to a point where I was really happy with it and it satisfied enough of the things that I needed, we were like, it's fine. So now let's get into a little bit of the development story of this product and the demographic I chose and some of the stuff behind it. I will have a very full vlog video coming up right after this where you see me actually going to Seoul, meeting with the development lead at Cosmax and the conversation we had, some of our experience with the Beauty of Joseon team. So make sure you subscribe to see that. But I felt like for this video, I had to describe a little bit of the situation behind it. When I was reached out to by Beauty of Joseon, for full disclosure, I had worked with them before. I did have a relationship with the brand prior, but the girl in charge of marketing, her name is Alyssa. She reached out to me and she was like, hey, we would like to do a collaboration with you. And I was like, okay. And they were like, we were thinking a sunscreen. And I was like, perfect. And they were like, we want you to fly out to Seoul and help us develop it. And the thing is I was on FaceTime with my husband and while I'm in Europe, he usually lives in the US and we do this thing where while on FaceTime, we go through emails together. And I was just like, I hate going through emails. So I was just kind of like going through and I opened the email and something just told me, look in the middle of the screen. Like I didn't even read the full paragraph. I beelined it to like the middle of the paragraph, mid sentence. And all I said was Ramon comes to Korea and tours manufacturing facility. And I just sat there like, Basically, yeah, they're proposing us go to Korea, work on the development of this product with the team at Cosmax, and this would be a collaboration with the brand. And in June is when we went to Korea, we met Juan, the amazing, amazing formulation lead at Cosmax. He's the guy in charge of the department that does sun care and masks. And we had a conversation and my conversation with the marketing team at Beauty of Joseon and with Juan were the exact same. I wanted this to be for the low maintenance individual, for the person who has oily acne prone skin, for the people who don't enjoy sunscreen, and they want something that doesn't feel and doesn't look like sunscreen on the skin that gives a nice matte finish. Ideally, I'd also love this to be a great makeup primer as well. Like I need this to be an all-in-one product. And Juan, once he found out I was actually a cosmetic chemist, was really receptive. And then we laid out the whole foundation of what are the actives we want. And there was stuff that he was like, we can't do that. We can't do that. There's limitations with that. And as I mentioned earlier, this had to be primarily oil soluble ingredients. And there was one ingredient I really wanted called alpha malite, which targets pigmentation that was put in the initial samples I was sent. We went through about a dozen and a half samples, I think, before we decided on this formula, but we had to omit the alpha malite because since it was oil soluble and oil based, it made the finish too shiny. So that's a reference for like what really could be done and couldn't be done with what I wanted and what we had at our disposal. And then after back and forth samples, making sure we got the finish right and everything, we got to this. I went to Seoul. We did the photo shoot. That's when we really got to see the final packaging of this. And now here we are. It is the day before launch, actually. We're filming this very 
very last minute. Once again, this is my matte sun stick. It's going to be a permanent addition to the Beauty of Dosan line. And spoiler alert, they're expanding their sun care line even more in the future. So stay tuned for that. I don't have a hand in that just yet, but we'll see what they say. But this will be a permanent addition to the Beauty of Dosan product line. This will be available on US Amazon for sure. Not sure about international. Beauty of Dosan's website, yes, style, style, Vana, style, Korean, where all fine Korean skincare is sold starting January 16th. You can get the sun stick by itself, or if you want to get the Glow Plus Sun Set, which is a set that I created with Beauty Joseon featuring the matte sun stick as well as the Glow Deep Serum. That's a limited edition offering. That is literally the PR box that all my other creator friends got. That'll be available as well. The sun stick will retail for $18. The set will be $28. The set is, again, limited edition. And the set for me is the base products you need if you want to really target fading the appearance of your pigmentation. That's my favorite product combination. First of all, before we finish the video, I want to thank Suman and Alyssa, who were the team at Beauty of Joseon, who I basically worked with to develop this, especially Alyssa. Homegirl really put up with a lot of my huge shout out to Alyssa, but they were the ones who decided they wanted to collaborate with me, saw something in me. Suman and I go way back. Suman was the one behind Beauty of Joseon when they first started, and they launched right when I created my content. They were one of the first brands to ever send me PR, and so we've just grown together over the last two and a half years. So huge shout out to them for really making a dream come true. I'm like the first, I'm like one of the first skincare creators to do a collaboration of this caliber either ever or in a very long time. I think Joan Day did one back in the day with Neogen, but like really having a hands-on approach in the development process. I'm also like the first Puerto Rican to ever do a collaboration with a Korean brand. Let's talk about that real quick. Also, huge shout out to Juan and his amazing team at Cosmax, which really they made the magic. They did the work. He was amazing to work with and I'm very honored that he put so much work and effort into this product that I really love and I hope you guys love as well. And a huge thank you to you guys because it's been two and a half years and realistically, this all happened really quick, really fast. And I'm so grateful to have been able to do this because of you guys. And this product was created with all of you in mind. Again, all of your comments, all of your suggestions, your recommendations were the first things I thought of when I was developing this product. So without you, I wouldn't be here. And without you, this product wouldn't be here either. So huge shout out to you guys. Once again, the link for this is going to be down below in the description box. So January 16th, you can get your hands on the sun stick I created with Beauty of Joe Sun. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and notification bell so that you know when I post more skincare, sunscreen, and fancy related content on my channel. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. Also, whatever questions you have about my sun stick, leave those down below in the comment section as well, please. And thank you for watching, guys. Bye.